Hey, welcome. Uh, in this fun video, I was thinking uh, I'm going to pull up one of my really old uh, models. This is from like, I don't know, 10 years ago and still uh, holds up as far as uh, fun and cute uh, goes. If I press play, it's this uh, fat bird just flapping his wings and when you uh, open up an old file like uh, I did in my case, I could see that some there's some issues, right? And sometimes this is coming from the normal map. So if I go into my material attribute, uh, let's see, material attribute, and I go to my normal map, right? If I click on this, I could see that the color space is set to sRGB. And in Maya, uh, it will create these strange uh, issues sometimes with your models. So. Uh, if I switch this to Utility uh, Raw, you can see that fixes the model and that looks much better. So it even got brighter. So now if I press play, uh, I can see that I can turn off the wireframe. And so in this video, what I would like to do is just for fun, uh, see if I can get this guy uh, to maybe fly in a circle. Okay, just as a fun uh, animation exercise. So uh, to do this, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to first see how I set this up. So I have the joins and if I turn on this button, you can see what the joins look like. So very simple, just a few joins flapping around. You can see how this is being controlled, right? So I got the joins and I got the uh, mesh, right? So this is the geometry and um, both of these are uh, inside a group. So if you have something like this for your experiment, um, if you have a simple model that you want to set uh, on a circle, maybe a flying or gliding butterfly, whatever, um, if you have joins and your mesh in the main, uh, you know, in the outside of the timeline, you can just select both of them and press Control G and that will, uh, you know, put it in a nice group for you. So then you can name it whatever you want. So maybe in my case, just for fun, I can call it Fat Bird. Uh, just for fun uh, and so what would be the very first thing for me to set this um, you know to start thinking about the animation well the first thing I would like to do is go to create and create a locator uh, we're gonna find we're gonna run into a few issues I'm gonna show you uh, why right so if I take for example my uh, bird and middle mouse drag it inside the locator um, and then I attempt to move the locator. Now, let's say I want to change the position. You can see there's some really funky stuff going on. The joints and the mesh are literally being separated. And the reason that is happening is because um, the mesh needs to be outside of the locator because the joints are controlling the mesh and the locator is contro controlling the joints, but you don't want the mesh to be controlled by the locator. So if you um, middle mouse drag the mesh out of your uh, setup here, right? Now, if I take the locator and I attempt to uh, move it, you can see that it's actually working really nice. So I can even play my animation and change the position or the location of my bird anywhere in time and space and it's what it's gonna work uh, really nice so as long as the mesh is outside of the locator um, then it will work another thing that i want to point out uh, and this is coming from uh, experience is if you ever wanted to change the size of your bird let's say it's you know it's too large so let's say i want a little bird so i want my bird to be this big well as soon as you do that um, you change the scale and even if I attempt to freeze my uh, location, which is not going to work, my is going to freak out. Um, here's the thing. If you ever export this out into another game engine or even, you know, uh, something like Blender or um, some, some other applica application, there's a really good chance this is going to blow up and not work well. Um, so my strong advice would be to change the size of your um, bird before you uh, add it to locator or or the joints right so maybe try to figure out what type of 
um, scale you want your model to be. And that's just something that I personally run into and I had to um, pre-scale my stuff before I export into the game engine. But for this exercise we are in Maya so we are fine. And what I'd like to do is just simply take this cute little guy and let's see if we can get him flying in the circle. Right, so um, what I need to do next is I'm going to create a path. So I'm going to jump into uh, top view. Let's go over here and we could change, turn our textures if we wanted to. Um, I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to grab the circle and just uh, let's drag the circle out. And let's say I want my bird to fly in the circle. If I wanted to center it, I can of course come here and zero this out just like that. I can press uh, space bar and let's make sure it's sort of on the grid, which obviously it is. And you know, if I wanted to, if I wanted to be above the grid, maybe this is going inside a game and I don't want it to be on the ground, I want it to be kind of in the air, I can raise this up. And next, let's go ahead and see if we can take our locator, um, hold down the shift key and select the path or the curve. And then I'm gonna go to animation, go to constraint, uh, let's see, motion path, and let's do attach to motion path, all right? I'm gonna press spacebar to go into my perspective view here, and now if I press play, technically he should be uh, going around in the circle, which he is, and he's definitely doing it way too fast, so let's uh, see if we can figure this out. Another thing he's seemingly doing is going backwards, right? So, how can we fix this? Well, if we um, click on our um, curve, we can go to motion path, right? And in the motion path, um, in here we have something called inverse front. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, if we inverse our front, it looks like he's going in the right direction at least, right? So the next big thing is going to be uh, maybe slowing him down a little bit. So right now um, it's taking him 13 frames to come to complete the circle and I want him to um, do this much slower so I'm going to increase this by 10 so I'm gonna go to 130 and let's see if um, we can also click on our locator and what I need to do is I need to find the motion path. So I'm going to go to my channel box, click on my locator, and then go to motion path. As soon as I click on it, I can see that there's two keyframes. One was on frame one, and the other one is on frame 13. So if I hold on the shift key and click, I should be able to drag this all the way to 130 instead. And this time he's going to uh, fly much slower, but he's not going to loop his animation. And let's see if that's the case. Yeah, so he starts to flap, but then he stops. So we need to loop his uh, flapping. So to loop the fla flapping, I'm going to click on the joins. And I'm going to go to Windows, Animation, Graph Editor. And here's my flapping animation. Now, uh, if I wanted to see all the joins, I can right click and go to Select Hierarchy. And you can see this is going to grab all the curves for this animation. And then what I could do is I can go to curves and I can do a post infinity uh, cycle, which means please uh, loop the animation. And you can see that um, if I hold on the old key and middle mouse button, you can see I can pan this. I can also scroll my middle mouse wheel to zoom out. And as you can see, I'm trying to show you that the curve has been repeated or looped, right? So now if I press play, the bird should be flapping around. Now he looks like he's increasing and decreasing the speed. All right, so to fix this, what I need to do is I'm gonna click on the locator and the locator has the motion path, which is from frame one to frame 130. And as you can see, it's kind of easing in and easing out, or I guess easing out, easing in. 
So let's go ahead and make this line uh, to be a linear line instead. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on this button here and you can see my motion path has changed to a straight line under my locator. And now if I press play, my bird should be consistently flying in the circle. So let's go ahead and go to, and let's go ahead and hide everything. And let's only show our uh, bird. And I'm even gonna sh hide the, uh, the grid. And if I press play, you can see that he is flying around the circle. And if we wanted to, uh, we can also, just for the sake of this presentation, go to settings, preferences, and right now our background is kind of uh, uh, gray. So let's give him maybe a blue sky to fly around uh, in. So, all right, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on uh, ambient occlusion for you guys. And there we go. Very cute. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.